Okay. First off, we should have found x and y intercepts. So to find x intercepts, we set the function equal to zero, right? So set it equal to zero tells us that x equals zero for three minus two times the cube root of x equals zero. So for x equals zero, that's a pretty easy one. That's just x equals zero. Um, and then for three minus two times the cube root of x, that's three, three halves equals cube root of x or x equals 27 eighths. Everybody good with that or no? Yeah? All right, so zero, zero and 27 eighths. So if we make that one, two, three, 27 eighths should be right about there. Good there? Yeah? Okay. All right. Um, next thing we need to do is take the derivative, I think. And I told you guys that uh, you should distribute that out first. So if we distribute the x to the two thirds through, f of x is now equal to three x to the two thirds minus two x to the one third times x to the two thirds is just x to the first power. And so now we'll take the derivative of that. Maybe. Trying to change colors and go to another page, but it doesn't seem to want to let me. Oh, well. All right. So uh, f prime of x is going to equal what? What is that prime equal? Explain again how we got the 3x to 2 thirds minus 2x. Like what, what you factored out, you. Uh, so I didn't factor, I distributed the x to the 2 thirds into it. So x to the 2 thirds times 3 would be 3x to the 2 thirds. And then x to the 2 thirds times 2x to the 1 third, if you add the exponents together, so it just becomes 2x. Good or no? Does that make sense or no? Yeah. Okay. All right. So now we'll take our derivative. So two thirds times three is two. So that's two x to the negative one third and then minus two. And so this becomes two over the cube root of x minus two. And when is that undefined? That's undefined at x equals zero. And when does that equal zero? Add the two over, right? And then you multiply by the cube root of x, you end up with cube root of x equals one, which is just x equals one. So we've got zero and we've got one. And we're going to determine maxima and minima for that. So plug in a, and what was our derivative here? Our derivative was two over the cube root of x, right? Minus two. So if we plug in something that's negative to that, two over the cube root of a negative is just another negative number. And a negative minus uh, two is still gonna be negative. So our function should be decreasing. If you plug in something like, um, something easy to take the cube root of would be like an eight. So if we plug in an eight, which is between zero and one, two divided by the cube root of eight, um, by the cube root of an eighth is two divided by a half or four minus two, so that's positive. And plug in a large positive like a thousand and this becomes a negative again. Everybody good with that? So we should have a local minimum at zero and a local maximum at x equals one. Good or no? Makes sense. Okay, now our second derivative. So this was 2x to the negative one third minus 2, right? So our second derivative should be negative 2 thirds x to the negative 4 thirds, or negative 2 over 3x to the 4 thirds. And so is this ever equal to 0?
Never. Never equal to zero. And it's undefined at x equals zero. So let me ask this. Is there going to be a point of inflection at x equals zero? The answer should be no, there's definitely not going to be because we already have a local minimum at zero. So you can't have a minimum and a point of inflection at the same x value. <clears throat> so we'll make a sign chart anyway, just to see, just to make sure. If we plug in something greater than zero, like a thousand, this x to the four thirds is always going to be positive, right? Because whatever value we plug in here, when we take it to the fourth power, it's positive. Cube root of positive, you get a positive. So the denominator will always be positive, and we'll have that negative two to make it negative. So both sides of zero should end up being negative, no matter whether you plug a positive number or a negative number into it. Everybody good with that? Yep. Okay, cool. So we know that our function is always concave down. It has a local minimum at zero and it has a local maximum at one. I should probably figure out what f of one is so we can plot that point. So what's f of one equal? One times three minus two. So one. So that would be the point one, one. So far good? Oh, that's terrible. So we're going to be concave down. That doesn't look very good either. Concave down. That doesn't look very good either. That looks better. Concave down to here. This is going up as we go to the left, decreasing to zero. Then at zero, between zero and one, we should be increasing and staying concave down. And then between one and infinity, we should be decreasing and still concave down. So it should continue curving down like this. And we'll note that one of our local minimums, or our local minimum, was a cusp, and the other one was a part of a nice smooth part of the curve. And we should have been clued in that at zero, that minimum should be a cusp, because when we determined when the derivative had critical value, or when the function had critical values, we got that it was the derivative was undefined at x equals zero. So it's not going to be a smooth part of the curve. It'll be a cusp for the point there. Does that make sense? Wait, so we know at zero it's a cusp because it's undefined for the Right. So our derivative was undefined at x equals zero, and our sign chart showed that it should be a minimum. Um, so that means that it's definitely a cusp. Whether it was a minimum or a maximum, it would still be a cusp. It just the fact that it was undefined at x equals zero, and that there was either a min or a max there, tells us that it's a cusp there. Okay. If the derivative was undefined there, but there wasn't a min or a max there there would have been a point of inflection there and it would have been a place where there was a vertical tangent line, but we'll worry about that another day. Okay. Does that, uh, that make sense to everybody? Everybody good with that? Wait, so for that, uh, part on the left, uh, left of zero, you don't actually need to like calculate any points for that, right? You just get the overall shape. Yep, exactly. I mean, if you want to calculate a couple points and have it look real nice, that's fine. Mine doesn't look, I mean, I, I'm certain that it should be steeper than that, just based on the nature of this function. Um, in fact, let's, uh, just for the heck of it, x to the two thirds times what? What was it? Three minus two x to the one third? So that's what Desmos shows it to look like. It looks like ours, except that you know, mine wasn't quite that steep. But yeah, if you, you drew what I drew, you'd be good. Oh, you can't see it? Sorry. I always forget to do that. Yeah, it should look like that. Good or not? Nah? 
Any questions or issues on that? All right, I'd like you guys to take a look and give this one a try. So I'll give you a few minutes to work on that one also. Sound good? I'll take that as a yes. All right. You guys have, I don't know, I'll give you about 10 minutes to work on this one and we'll come back and start talking about it unless you need a little more time. Ready to go.